In my previous video, 8-bit timer 0 was programmed using assembly to introduce time delay. In this video, 16-bit timer 1 is programmed to give different time delays with up to 4 seconds delay. Timer 1 is a 16-bit timer and has more functionalities than timer 0 or timer 2. And to support these extra functionalities, there are two control registers, timer counter control register A and control register B. To support 16-bit counting, timer 1 has two 8-bit counters, timer counter high and timer counter low. And when the count value exceeds 65,535, the time overflow flag will be set. Timer 1 in CTC mode has two output compare channels, channel A and channel B. And each channel has two 8-bit uh, output compare registers, the high register and the low register. When the 16-bit value in this register equals the 16-bit value in the counter, then this will set the output compare flag for either channel A or channel B. Timer 1 has a feature called input capture which means that when there is an external pulse at pin PB0 of the microcontroller or pin D8 of the Arduino, when there is a pulse then the 16-bit value in the counter will be captured and stored in the 16-bit register input capture register. All of the registers of timer 1 are located in the extended I.O. register memory. Therefore, we need to use instructions such as LDS and STS to access them instead of using in and out. LDS stands for load immediate from data space and STS is store immediate to data space. We start with the timer 1 control register which is made of two registers, control register A and control register B. In this video, we'll focus on programming timer 1 in normal mode which means that Timer 1 is a normal counter that will count from 0 to 65,535 and on the next count this will set the overflow flag. So we use the timer 1 control register to set the mode of operation of the timer and to do this we need to program the, the bits WGM10, 11, 12 and 13 which are located in uh, control register A and control register B and to get the normal mode we need to insert zeros into these bits. We also program the timer 1 control register to determine the prescalar value and this is done by programming the clock select bits located in control register B. So a value of 101 will give us a prescalar of 1024. And since we are programming timer 1 in normal mode, the rest of these bits are not used so we can assign 0 to them. Timer 1 has four flags inside the timer interrupt flag register, namely timer overflow flag, the output compare flag for channel B, output compare flag for channel A, and the input capture flag. In this video, we'll be focusing on the timer overflow flag which will be set when the count value exceeds 65,535. In this first example, we'll be programming timer 1 in normal mode. So these are the two bytes we copy into control register A and control register B to give us normal mode with prescalar 1024. And the timer counter register would be initialized with a value of 0 so that the count begins from 0 all the way to 65,535 and on the next clock count the timer overflow flag will be set and this flag is set every 4.19 seconds. Timer 1 in normal mode can be programmed to give us different delay times by choosing different initial count value x. And we know that the total time is given by this equation here and the unknown x 
is given by this equation here so for example if we want to get a 0.5 second delay the value of x is given here and when we copy this value in the counter register then the delay will be 0.5 seconds A quick look at the assembly code within the Timer 1 subroutine. We have the code needed to flash an LED connected to pin PB5 of the microcontroller or pin D13 of the Arduino. And the LED flashes every 0.5 seconds by calling uh, the subroutine delay timer 1. Inside subroutine delay timer 1, using the assembler directive equate, we assign to variable value this number which is needed to give us the 0.5 second delay then we store the high byte of value in register R20 and then we store inside the timer counter high register and then the low byte we copy into R20 and store it into the low byte of timer counter register so now we have initialized the timer counter with the required value. Next we copy the first byte into the control register A and then they copy the second byte into control register B so that we have normal mode and prescaler 1024. Next using this indefinite loop we check the status of the timer overflow flag and the loop terminates when the flag is set. Then we clear the timer overflow flag and then we stop timer 0 and the process is repeated. In a future video I'll demonstrate timer interrupts such as overflow interrupt and compare match interrupt. Thank you for watching.